Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Stuck at Home Startup Webinar. I'm Brian Weisfeld, and just like you, I am stuck at home. Um, I thank you for all joining us. I hope that uh, you're all safe and your families are healthy. A shout out to all the first responders I'm and here. workers that are keeping us safe right now. Uh, we're so excited to be with you today. We know that this is a difficult time. A lot of your summer camps and summer activities are being canceled, but difficult times often create a lot of opportunities. And what Janine, Sean, and I want to do today is we want to inspire you to start a business this summer. We're going to give you some great ideas for businesses. We'll give you some tips and tricks to do a better job of it. And then we're going to have a chat with Mo from Mo's Bows, who'll tell you all about what it's like to run your own business and what it's like to be on Shark Tank. So two housekeeping things. First of all, you'll see a chat button either down here or over here or somewhere. Uh, if you have any questions for Mo or any issues, type it in. We'll be monitoring and take a, take uh, uh, help you with that. Also, uh, don't worry if you miss something because we're going to be recording this. You'll get an email later in the day that has all the details. And if for some reason you're having any trouble with your screen, just refresh your browser and we should show up. Great. So let's get started. Let's introduce ourselves. I'm going to pass it over to Janine to uh, introduce us first. Hi, guys. I'm Janine Glista. I'm a co-founder and executive producer of Biz Kids TV series. Uh, we're a national series that teaches kids how to make and manage money. We cover all aspects of young entrepreneurship and financial literacy. And uh, my partners are the folks that created Bill Nye the Science Guide. Um, a little bit more of a well-known series. Uh, we took their model of fun, fast-paced, humorous content and applied it to business. Uh, we launched on PBS initially, uh, but since then have syndicated to commercial television stations around the country. Uh, we have uh, 71 episodes. Uh, we've won two Emmy Awards. We were nominated for about 17 Emmy Awards. Um, and we have lots of free resources for teachers, parents, students um, on our website. And we also sell full episodes, bundles of entrepreneur stories. Uh, we've done two books and an online course for teens. On to Sean. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sean Patel, and I am the founder of Prep Expert. We do SAT and ACT courses for uh, high school students. And um, any high school students joining us or is it more middle school and elementary? Love to let you guys, you guys can go ahead and type in the chat so we know uh, what grade levels we're talking to and uh, where you guys are from. That would be great. Um, feel free to chat with us throughout this webinar. Uh, so I was back on, I was on Shark Tank in 2016, uh, closed a deal with billionaire Mark Cuban, and he's been such a great investor, advocate, and partner for the company. Um, we even co-wrote this book together called Kids Startup, How You Can Be an Entrepreneur to teach other kids how they can uh, be entrepreneurs as well. And so I'm excited to be here and share some uh, business tips with you all uh, over the next hour. Great. Thanks, Sean. And uh, I'm Brian Weisfeld. I am the author of The Startup Squad, and I'm going to kick things off here. Now, uh, when I was a kid, I was always running businesses or working. Uh, and most of the things that I did were related to um, things that I already enjoyed doing. So I loved food as a kid. I loved candy. So I had a gummy bear business. Um, I loved sports. So I had a job working at a baseball card store. I loved to ski. So I worked at a, uh, a ski shop in high school. And then as an adult, I helped entrepreneurs scale and build their businesses. So I was part of a team that bought IMAX and helped to build that company. And then also moved from New York to Silicon Valley um, about 12 years ago to help build coupons.com. But I've got two daughters, and when my oldest daughter was eight, I watched her try to sell Girl Scout cookies and not really know how to do it. And I, that gave me the inspiration to write a novel series to get kids interested in entrepreneurship, and that is The Startup Squad. And I am even more excited to talk to you today because this is the book birthday for The Startup Squad Face the Music. The second book in our series comes out today. So uh, this is a series about four sixth grade girls. In the first book, they are running a uh, lemonade stand to raise money for a field trip to the local amusement park. They're not friends. They don't even like each other, but they have to figure out how to work together and um, sell lemonade. 
In the second book, which just came out today, Harriet is the star. She's crazy. She's so much fun. She has three older brothers that are in a rock band, and the girls start a business selling T-shirts to raise money for the band. Each of the books, in the back of the book, we actually take have some business lessons in there where we explain what was going on in the story and translate the business concept. So like, hey, remember when the girls were making a big sign for their lemonade stand? That's actually called marketing. And then we give you some marketing tips about how to run your business. But it's all about these girls who are being entrepreneurs. And that's a word we're gonna use a lot today is entrepreneurs. So let's start by just defining what that is. An entrepreneur is a person who organizes and operates a business, taking on bigger risks in order to do so. And that risk part is really important because entrepreneurs think differently than everyone else because it's risky to run a business. Uh, you know, businesses, some businesses work, some businesses don't, but entrepreneurs are comfortable taking that risk. And they're comfortable knowing that um, even if they fail, they're gonna learn something and then the next business is going to be more successful. And so what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna talk a lot about how entrepreneurs think and that entrepreneurial mindset. And we're gonna tell you how you can become an entrepreneur in three steps. All right, step one, choose a business. Well, of course, if you're gonna run a business, you need a business. And remember when I said when I was a kid, a lot of the things that I did were related to things that I already enjoyed doing? Well, that's the same thing. Think of businesses that you're, that you, things that you like to do and how you could turn that into a business. So for example, do you, if you like to cook or you like to bake, you can start businesses uh, making cookies, making, making brownies, selling lemonade. <laughs> you can review other people's recipes. You can review restaurants. There's a lot of different things you can do if you like to cook or bake. I'm gonna tell you the story of Corey. Corey, um, got tired of taking the bus to school every day. And so he wanted to help his family raise money for a car. So he started selling lemonade. And then when it got cold out, he lives in New Jersey, he started selling hot chocolate. And then he started selling cookies. And it turns out the cookies were really good. So he has a business called Mr. Corey's Cookies. And you can go online and buy his cookies and he'll ship them to you anywhere in the United States. Now, right now with the current stay at home orders and the coronavirus, it's not the best time to be starting a cookie business or selling lemonade. But what you can do is start to build your client list and build your reputation as a cookie expert. So let's assume you have the best recipe at all. Open up a social media account for you or on YouTube and start talking about cookies, reviewing other people's cookies, uh, videos of you making your cookies, this is Mason, for an example. Mason is seven years old. He has a, he loves to cook. He has an Instagram account and a YouTube channel where he makes recipes and reviews other people's recipes. And he's already got 3,000 viewers or 3,000 followers on Instagram and some of his videos have 1,000 views. So if you start, let's just, if you start talking about your cookies, you'll get a lot of followers and interest. And then when you're ready to sell cookies, you already have a customer base and you've already established yourself as a cookie expert. If you like arts and crafts, there's a lot of businesses. You can make slime, you can make art and sell the art, which you can do digitally um, in a virtual world. You can make jewelry. There's a lot of different businesses. I'm gonna tell you about Reese. And I gotta tell you, this is my favorite business of all time. Reese lives in Virginia. She loves animals. She also is into arts and crafts. She realized that a lot of kids, when they are finished with their stuffed animals and they don't want them anymore, they either um, throw them away or they donate them to charity. So she started a business called Wild and Wacky Pets. And what she does is she collects all these used stuffed animals and she'll wash them and dry them off and clean them and make them look as, look as good as new. And then she rips off their heads and sews them back on different bodies. This is an elephant head on a penguin body. How cool is that? I love this business so much I bought my own. Look. It's a pig head <laughs> on a giraffe body. Hello, I'm a pig giraffe. How cool. I love this business so much. Okay, if you're into arts and crafts, here's another great business you can start while you're stuck at home. Come up with a design, come up with a stuck at home slogan, and then have your parents open up an account at either Zazzle or Cafe Press, and you can upload your design and put it on any of their products. They have water bottles, they have t-shirts, they're making masks right now. All you have to do is have your parents open up an account, upload your design, 
put it on the products, and then they'll give you a little website that you can use and send it to all your friends and start selling. You don't have to make anything. You don't have to package anything. You don't have to ship anything. They do everything for you. All you do is upload your design, Zazzle or Cafe Press. Okay, let's assume you're really good at video games or you're really good at math. You can start virtual tutoring. You can do one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions with people. You can start videos about your favorite subject. Khan Academy, which is a, one of the most popular online um, education started because he, Sal Khan started uploading videos about math for his niece. So this is Kemery. Kemery is a girl who loves J Japanese, the Japanese language and all things Japan. She started uploading videos of just her teaching people how to say a different word in Japanese. So if she was ever going to start giving Japanese lessons, she's already got this, um, she's already established herself as an expert and created this expertise. The other way to think of a business to start is to think of a problem that you have. So for remember I said entrepreneurs think differently? Entrepreneurs don't see problems. Entrepreneurs see opportunities. So think of a problem, how do you solve it? This is Alina Morse. When Alina was seven, she went to the bank with her dad and the teller offered her a lollipop. And her dad said, well, you know, Alina, lollipops aren't very good for your teeth. And she said, well, why not? People love eating lollipops. Why can't they be a lollipop that's good for your teeth? So there you have it. That was the problem. The problem was, why can't there be a lollipop that's good for your teeth? So she did some research, found out there's something called xylitol that they put in uh, gum for adults that makes their teeth stronger, figured out how to put it into a lollipop, called them zollipops, and Alina Morse at age 14 was just the youngest person ever to be on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine. You could buy zollipops all over the United States, Target, Walmart, most supermarkets. She even expanded into taffy. This is Zaffy taffy. This is the same, has the same um, stuff that's good for your teeth, but it's in taffy. Okay, here's a stuck at home problem to solve. Everyone's stuck at home. A lot of people are doing spring cleaning and they've got a lot of things they wanna get rid of. Reach out to your friends, neighbors, family, ask them if there's anything you wanna get rid of, anything they wanna get rid of and have them send you a picture of it. Then have your parents open up an account on eBay and go onto eBay and create a listing to sell that product for them. And you can sell anything on eBay. This is a listing for a pair of dirty socks. <laughs> I put up, he's selling his dirty socks. And look, the condition, it says new with defects. Of course there are defects, they're, they're disgusting. <laughs> Six bids and sold those dirty socks for $3.25. So have your friend or neighbor send you a picture of whatever it is they wanna sell, create the listing. And then when, it's, when it gets sold, you just charge your friend or neighbor a fee or take a commission and tell them who to mail the who the winner, winning day was and who to mail it to. You don't have to go to the post office. You don't have to box it up. You don't have to do anything completely stuck at home business. Okay, second step to become an entrepreneur, you have to think like an entrepreneur. Remember entrepreneurs think differently than everyone else. So if you've ever heard that expression, win some, lose some, well, entrepreneurs don't say that because they're comfortable taking risks. So they don't say win some, lose some. They say win some, learn some because they know even if they fail, they're still gonna learn something that's gonna help them succeed the next time. Think of the first time you ever tried a new sport or played a new video game or did a new gymnastics move. You probably didn't do very well, but you kept working at it. You got better and better until you mastered it. That's the whole thing is everyone fails, but you just have to take that risk and get comfortable that you might fail. Even famous people fail all the time. Beyonce, when she was nine years old, was on the TV show Star Search, which is like America's Got Talent for Kids, and she lost. Can you imagine that? Beyonce lost at a talent show, but she didn't say, oh, well, I guess I'll become a chef. No, she kept working harder and harder and obviously became a very successful performer. Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, is one of the wealthiest people in the world, but his first company was a bust. It was called Trafo Data, and he lost all his customers. But I think had he not failed at Trafo data and learned so much that Microsoft would not have been as successful. JK Rowling got rejected by 12 different publishers before she found someone that was willing to publish Harry Potter. 12 different publishers said, eh, what kid's gonna wanna read that? When I was writing The Startup Squad, I got a ton of rejections. 
Um, do you know Scholastic, the publishers, they, uh, lot, they do a lot of book fairs around the country. They rejected me. Look, that's a, that's a rejection letter from Scholastic. And I got rejected by this agent and this agent and this agent and this agent and this agent. This agent actually rejected me twice. I sent a, her a draft of the manuscript in February. She rejected it. I sent it to her again in October. She rejected that one too. I had one publisher tell me my writing for children was so bad, she was surprised to learn that I actually had children. She really told me that. But every failure I learned from, every rejection I learned from, and here I am talking to you on the day that my second book is published. So third step to become an entrepreneur, you have to learn some basic business skills. And so now I'm going to pass it over to Sean, who'll take you through that. All right. Hello. Can everyone hear and see me again? Just want to make sure before I give the whole yes. presentation yep. and <laughs> um, as well. So, uh, you know, I already um, kind of introduced myself, so I won't bore you with that again. But uh, I'm here to teach you some basic business tips now that Brian kind of gave the overview. So. Um, I'd like to start off with an example from uh, my book, Kids Startup, which is uh, many kids, you know, this is just one idea, um, can actually make duct tape wallets. This is a fun idea you can make, easy to make at home during, um, you know, this time at home with coronavirus. Almost everyone has a wallet, but most wallets are far too bulky, so you can make these fun duct tape wallets. And I wanna use it as an example to teach you some basic business um, tips. So the first thing is you have to understand what revenue means. So revenue is really the money you collect, okay? So it's uh, oftentimes you can think of revenue as sales or money you collect. How much are you charging a customer? So for a duct tape wallet, for example, uh, the price can be anywhere from usually about five to ten dollars that you'll be able to sell it for. And so your revenue per sale is on the ideal price or ideal revenue would be about eight dollars. So that's how much money you're going to make from selling a duct tape wallet, right? Eight dollars. Now you have to think about your costs. So after you think about revenue, you should think about costs or actually at the same time probably. So costs or COGS is cost of goods sold. How much is it going to take, how much money is it going to take you to actually make that duct tape wallet? Well, you probably have um, ruler and scissors already, so you don't need to um, factor that into the costs of making the each wallet, but you do need to buy duct tape. And so it's probably about 50 cents worth of duct tape that would be required in order to make a wallet. So that's your cost. So then how do you figure out profit? Well, profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So remember our revenue was $8 and our cost was 50 cents. And so our profit per wallet is $7 and 50 cents. Okay. So always when you're coming up with any business model, this is the equation you want to remember, which is profit is equal to revenue minus cost or cost of goods sold. Right. And so um, that's just one simple example of how to do it. Now I wanna give you another idea as to something that a lot of people could use right now at home, which are masks, right? And so one business idea for those watching is to create your own do-it-yourself masks and then sell them to your family and friends or even people on the internet, right? And so uh, you wanna think about three questions. What is your revenue? What is the cost? and what is the profit if you decide to make this business at home, right? And so to answer the first question, what is the revenue? You wanna ask yourself, how much can you sell masks for? Well, I did a quick search on Etsy and I found that masks were selling for about $10 a piece, right? And so you might want to decide that your sale price or your revenue price is gonna be $10. So that's your revenue on the mask, okay? Then how much do you buy the cloth for? Well, I did an eBay search and I found that you can buy about six masks worth of cloth for $20. So what's your cost to produce one mask? It's $20 divided by six. 
So $3.33 per mask, that's the cost. So if I do the profit equation, it's profit is equal to revenue minus cost, $10 minus $3.33, right? And so our profit per mask would be $6.60, 66 cents per mask. And so that would be the profit that you could make if you created a mask and it costs you $3 to make those masks. But you could make even more profit, right? And how do you make more profit? Maybe you already have cloth laying around the house. Maybe your mom or dad can help you get cloth for cheaper, right? And so um, if you can get cloth for even cheaper, you can maximize your profits. And that's one way that a lot of businesses are able to increase profits is by reducing their costs, right? And so uh, before I end my, present, my part of the presentation, I do wanna teach you guys a little bit about, you know, what is the number one predictor of success for entrepreneurs? And the answer's already there on the screen for you, but it's not smarts, it's not emotional smarts, it is self-control, but and it's not creativity. So the most important predictor to decide whether you're gonna become a successful entrepreneur or not is whether you have self-control. Self-control is the most universal and accurate predictor of success. If you wanna be successful, you need to be able to manage emotions and work hard. And all of this requires a lot of self-control. And I'm not just making this up. This is actually proven research. And some of you may know the uh, research that this comes from, and it's called the Stanford Marshmallow Experiment, where in 1972, in this very famous experiment, these researchers placed four to six-year-old children, uh, basically one five-year-old child, in a room with just one marshmallow. And then they told the children, you could either eat this marshmallow now or if you wait 15 minutes, you'll get two marshmallows, right? And they did this experiment on 600 children, right? And what they found was, and you might be thinking, well, that's really easy. I could definitely wait 15 minutes to not have that marshmallow. But when you're just sitting in a room with that one marshmallow, you don't have um, all your technology to distract you or anything like that. It becomes really hard. It can become very difficult, especially for a five-year-old. And so what's really interesting about this study is that only one third of the children or 33% of the children were able to exercise enough self-control to not eat the marshmallow immediately. And then researchers uh, followed these children like 20, 30 years later, and they were found to be more successful based on many life outcomes. They earned more money. They were more popular with their friends, classmates, and teachers. They had better health. They scored 210 points higher on average on the SAT exam. And many other studies have continuously found that self-control is a predictor of success. And so what's really the secret for all of you young entrepreneurs who are kids and teenagers in order to become successful entrepreneurs? It's you need to learn how to practice self-control. You have to be able to say, you know, I'm not actually gonna watch that YouTube video or Netflix right now, I'm gonna work on my business. And that's real self-control, and that's gonna separate the really successful entrepreneurs from the not so successful ones. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so I'm gonna hand it off now to uh, Janine for her part of the presentation, and uh, thank you all. That was, that was great. I love the marshmallow experiment. So cute. Um, okay. We already uh, went over biz kids. Um, obviously a very successful series. Um, but I want to, I want to circle back to something that Brian had mentioned about not being afraid of failure. Um, because biz kids didn't originally start like this. It didn't look like this. It looked like this, a very rudimentary logo. Um, kind of embarrassing. Um, but the project actually originally started with uh, some different partners and we had a different funder lined up to fund the show, but the whole thing fell apart and uh, it was kind of a, a depressing thing. Um, definitely, uh, I felt like a failure. Um, but a year later, I circled back to connect with someone that I'd met through the original partner group. Her name was Jamie. She'd worked on Bill Nye and she brought in the two creators of Bill Nye the Science Guy, Jim and Aaron, and the four of us partnered together to secure funding 
And uh, it quickly um, all came together because of their credibility and the fact they'd won over 20 MA awards with Bill Nye. Uh, but the point is um, you have to take the first step because that's what the that's what the logo originally started as. And then we got to um, a, an opportunity to win two Emmy Awards. And then that led to probably one of the, the highlights of my career, which was meeting Oscar the Grouch. But, you know, you don't go from this rudimentary logo to meeting Oscar the Grouch. Uh, it starts with taking that first step. And the one thing I want to encourage kids is that they just don't ha you guys don't have any idea of what what the opportunities are going to be like, like what they're going to, what going to what's going to come your way. So the important thing is just to take that first step and um, you just just have to have faith in the process. OK, so going back to the part of my presentation um, that deals with marketing and sales, I've seen a couple of questions come in on how to market, how to how to sell your product. Um, marketing is the process of getting potential customers interested, whereas sales is sealing the deal. So marketing, marketing is more the process and sales is more of a transaction. Um, and the important thing to know about marketing and sales is that you have to have a little bit of a marketing strategy to, to lead to sales. And we're going to walk you through uh, how to develop a, a basic marketing strategy. Uh, but before I do that, the one thing that you need to figure out before you start your marketing is who is your target customer? Um, in other words, who's most likely to buy your product or your service. And why do you need to figure this out? Well, because if you know who your target customer is, and if you know what they want, if you know what they need, you can then refine your marketing strategy to attract customers, which leads to more sales. Um, so for example, say you're selling a book that teaches kids how to start their own business. One of your target customers is probably grandparents um, because they might want to buy the book for their grandkids. Um, say you make uh, T-shirts for babies with really cool slogans. Your target customer is going to be moms with new babies. Um, maybe you sell jewelry and you have discovered that you, it's a real hit with punk rockers, um, maybe that live in London. So punk rockers that live in London is going to be your target customer. Um, maybe it's more um, like this guy here. His name's Adrian. He appeared on Biscuits TV series. Uh, he had um, he had a problem trying to carry his basketball to the court when he was riding his bike. So he came up with a product called All Net Sack uh, that he could sling over his shoulder that could easily carry his basketball. Uh, so for him, his target customer um, are kids that are playing basketball, uh, probably ones that don't drive. Um, so that's the first step is to figure out your target customer. Um, then when you have your target customer in mind, then you can come up with a basic marketing strategy. And uh, every marketing strategy uh, starts with making decisions in these four areas. Uh, and they all happen to start with P. So it's product, price, place, and promotion. And together, combined, that becomes your marketing mix. And essentially what you're doing is you're making decisions in these four areas so that you can kind of attract your target customer. Um, the first P is product, but this also includes uh, service uh, if you're selling a service. And I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use the example of Starbucks. So everyone knows Starbucks; they sell food and drinks. Um, but one of the things um, that they're selling, um, well, they don't just sell food and drinks; they sell an entire kind of package of feelings around the food and drinks. So maybe people feel like it's uh, a treat for them. Maybe it's convenience. Maybe it's uh, free Wi-Fi or a place to connect. Um, when you think of making decisions in this category of product, you think of like the whole enchilada, the whole thing that you're selling. Um, maybe it's the packaging, the instructions, a money back guarantee. Um, and so one of the things you need to think about when you're making decisions in this category of product uh, is, is what can you do to make your product or your service a little bit unique? Uh, so for example, Say you are making pet raincoats. Um, maybe you make raincoats for dogs that make them look like flying saucers. How will you make your raincoats stand out? How will you make them unique? Maybe you include a couple of dog poop bags or a couple little treats. Um, customers really love it when you have a little bit of extra attention to detail uh, that will make your product stand out and unique. Uh, the next P is price. Um, so how do you figure out what's the right price to charge? Um, obviously, 
the first step, like Sean said, is to figure out if you can make a profit. You've got to cover your costs. Um, but then do you go high end and uh, position yourself as a luxury item or do you go low end bargain basement raincoats um, or do you even go somewhere in the middle of the road? What's what's a good guide? Well, again, you go back to that target customer and match your pricing to uh, what you think your target customer um, might be willing to. To bought to spend. So using the example of raincoats for Chihuahuas, so you've done some research and you figure out that the majority of people who own Chihuahuas are rich socialites, rich female socialites. This is just a hypothetical example. Um, but based on that, you decide to position your product as a luxury item. So it costs $25 to make. Maybe you can get away with charging $50, $50 so that your profit is $25. Um, that's just one pricing strategy. There's a lot of pricing strategies. Um, I would suggest that you research them online. Um, maybe check out what the competition is charging, like Sean explained. Um, another option for pricing is some entrepreneurs build in covering the cost of being able to give back. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with Tom's Shoes, they have a buy one, give one model. Uh, Warby Parker glasses um, also do that. Some people also build in 10% to be able to give back to like animal shelter, something that ties in with their product or service. So that's also something to consider when you're coming up with price. The next P is place. So in other words, where will customers find you? Are you going to have a pop-up shop uh, in the mall? Are you going to knock um, door to door in your neighborhood? Are you gonna sell at a farmer's market or a craft fair? Obviously all of those options aren't possible right now. Um, and those will be possible once we're, we're done social distancing. Um, so the best options for kids right now is obviously uh, to sell online. Uh, we mentioned eBay, Craigslist, um, Etsy is a great website if you're making handmade items. Um, it's pretty easy to accept electronic payment selling online these days, um, either through uh, those three platforms or um, PayPal, Venmo, an electronic transfer from your customer's bank to your cell phone or email is also doable. The tricky thing right now with social distancing is being able to showcase your product, but maybe you can drop off your product outside a neighbor's door. You Maybe you could do an exchange standing six feet apart. Uh, we recommend checking with your parents or your caregivers to see what's doable in your area. Um, okay, the last P is promotion. So how are you going to get the word out about your product or service? And it could be something as simple as posting flyers um, to uh, pulling a pulling a banner behind an airplane and everything in between. Um, that's, again, where it's really helpful to know who your target customer is, because if you can figure out where they like to hang out, you're most likely to be able to promote to them. So, you know, when there's no social distancing, obviously we're selling Raincoats for Chihuahuas, maybe going to the dog park or uh, doing a flyer at the pet store might be a great option. But right now we're more limited. So we would encourage you to reach out on um, your social media channels. Um, and lots of kids know how to do that already. And if you don't, you can easily figure out how to learn that online. So that's a little bit about marketing, the four piece of marketing, product, price, place, and promotion. Um, on to sales. Sales is a game of numbers. Bottom line, uh, you have to get through many, many no's before you get to that final yes. And as kids, you guys have nothing to lose. Like as adults, you know, we've got a mortgage. Some of them, some of the, some adults are changing diapers or have to make car payments. So it's a little bit more risky. But as, as kids, as teens, you don't have a lot to lose uh, by getting out there and trying to promote or, or sell your product or service. Uh, and in fact, if you do get a no, be brave and ask the customer why. Is it not the right size? Is it not the right color? Do they not have a need for it? Is it too expensive? You can get a lot of feedback to improve your product or service just by being brave enough to ask why they don't want your product or service. Maybe by having a conversation with your customer, you'll figure out, or actually they'll figure out that they really do want your, your product or your service. So really it comes down to maybe you haven't pitched your product or your service. Uh, appropriately. So your pitch needs work. So digging a little bit deeper into that no actually gives you some really great information to improve your product or service. And in fact, uh, when BizKids first approached um, the publisher uh, that we we pitched uh, Workman Press to do our book, uh, How to Turn $100 into a Million, the very first response we got back from them was a solid no. Um, 
so we dug a little deeper and they said, well, based on what you put, what you pitched, we really tend to do books that have a lot more detail. So we went back to them and we said, oh, you want detail? We can give you detail. And so after the second and third submission, we finally got to, to our yes. So be persistent. Um, three ways to start sales uh, that we would recommend is number one, start with family and friends. Um, people that love and care about you that can really give you some good, honest feedback so you can make changes and improve your, your product or service. Um, build some sales. And um, the second step would be to obviously leverage your social media accounts. It's what kids, uh, teens do best these days. I can't imagine a teen out there that doesn't know Snapchat or uh, TikTok these days. But if you don't know it, you can learn it and promote your, uh, your business uh, through your social media channels. Um, the third thing is something that kids really probably don't think about, um, and that's getting press. Uh, getting some media attention. Uh, we have countless kids that have appeared on our TV series because we found them online. Uh, maybe they started in uh, uh, as a local article in their local newspaper or um, local radio station, went to a local event, got a little bit of press, that led to more press, and they built from there. And here's the thing, a little secret I want to let the teens in on is that America loves entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs. When kids take an initiative to start a business, people are so happy to shine a spotlight on it. I mean, when adults start a business, it's kind of a non-news day, but when kids start a business, people love it and, and the media will shine a spotlight on it. Um, we've seen it countless times and like I said, we found all of our stories um, online, and sometimes in person, but mostly online. Um, and a little bit of media attention leads to more media attention. So uh, we encourage you to reach out to your local media once you have built a little bit of a following. So you might say, OK, Janine, but uh, I'm still really nervous. I don't know what to say when I find my target customer. And I'm, I'm not quite sure what to say when, when I get that chance to actually seal the deal. So here's three steps three things that you can think about in terms of how to talk about what it is you're selling. This is this could be your pitch. You tell them what you're selling and try to include a need that you're addressing for your target customer. Um, tell them why it's the best and include a feature. And then ask if you can tell them a little bit more about your business. Um, your, your sales pitch may change from here, but this is like a great place to start. So this is what, this is what it might sound like. So say you're selling cookies. You might say, okay, Mr. Rogers, I'm selling cookies that are the perfect afternoon treat. They're the best because I make them with high quality organic ingredients. Can I tell you a little bit more about my cookie business? Um, okay, uh, Jane Doe, I'm selling lip gloss and uh, it's lip gloss that stays on for hours. And my lip gloss is the best because it comes in five popular colors. Can I tell you a little bit more about my lip gloss business? Okay, what if it's a service? This is what it would sound like. Um, hi, John Doe, I'm selling car cleaning service that saves you time. Uh, it's the best because I have a special car vacuum that gets into all the nooks and crannies. Um, I wear a mask, I wear gloves, no one in my family has been sick lately. Um, can I tell you a little bit more about my car cleaning business? And you're not quite actually asking for the sale immediately, you're just trying to get in that conversation with the customer so that you can kind of lead up to the sale. Um, and here's here's the thing, like kids these days, you guys have a really unique opportunity right now. Um, you're not as busy. You don't have any sports activities because they're all canceled. Social distancing's in place. So you're more limited about your social activities. You have a lot of time on your hands. Why not take advantage of this time to set yourself up financially by making money from a business that could open up all kinds of options and opportunities for you? Um, so if all of this feels overwhelming, just start by making that first batch of cookies, making that first batch of lip gloss, maybe asking your grandparents or um, somebody you know and trust if you can clean their car to practice it. Just start. Just take that first step. See how it goes. And then when the money starts rolling in, you can figure out the rest from there. So on that note, I would love to now uh, segue to introducing a very, oh wait, sorry, before I segue to introducing Mo from Mo's Bows, one more thing, um, we want to encourage you guys to stay safe uh, during COVID-19. That's the most important thing. Like it's great starting a business, but please keep in mind social distancing, washing your hands, 
finding other ways to deliver products safely. And if you do have an idea for a service-based business, think about how to offer it carefully where there's no contact. Like obviously landscaping or window washing uh, is very doable, but going into someone's home to clean it, probably not a good idea right now. Uh, so check with what's going on in your, your local area. Um, also, if you don't feel comfortable really going out right now during social distancing, that's fine. You can still build your foundation. You can still get the word out. Um, it's a perfect time to create your offering. And then when things open up again, then you're not starting from scratch. So now on that note, I would love to introduce Mosiah Bridges from Mo's Bows. Is Mo able to connect? Can we see him? Here he comes. Hey guys. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hey. Thank you. I'm good. I had to switch my hat out for you guys. You're looking so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so excited to talk to you. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, Mo, how old are you now? Are you 18? 19? I'm 18. 18. Okay. 18. Well, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to introduce you now. Um, when you were nine, you started your bow tie business, right? Started sewing? Yeah. And I was nine years old when I nine started. Years old. Yeah. And I think you weren't happy with the the bow ties that are available on the market so you started sewing bow ties from scrap fabric from your from your granny is that right yes that was right so when i was nine i really had a passion for fashion i had a passion for really looking good and dressing nice and yeah. i think i pretty much adapted that from my dad he was always you know wearing three-piece suits and just going to mcdonald's to pick up some fries so it was just something that i picked up and so with that passion that I had for fashion, I would go out into the stores and I would see nothing but, you know, these boring black and blue bow ties that my mom was like, I'm not getting for you because, you know, you're going to get mustard all over the bow tie. <laughs> so I ended up asking my grandmother, who's been sewing for over 50 years, to teach okay. me how to sew. And then my company pretty much took off from there. That's amazing. That's amazing. I can't believe you were nine when you started. Um, I was literally high and so short. That's you can so see inspiring. there. Yeah, <laughs> so inspiring. And so your business took off. Um, you ended up on Shark Tank, and with your mom. I did end up on Shark Tank, right? mm -hmm. which and was a pretty awesome. It was pretty fun, pretty awesome, and yeah. it's pretty scary now that I think about it today. Because what a lot of people don't know is that I actually forgot my pitch on Shark Tank. <laughs> Uh, but like when I was rolling, I just had to keep rolling and had to keep rolling with it. Um, but I'm glad they didn't show that in the camera. I'm Did glad. they stop and start again when you were pitching? Because it's is it was it recorded? I did it. I just had to roll with the flow. It yeah. is recorded, so I had to roll the flow. Uh, it was a thing where I was supposed to talk and then my mom was supposed to talk. But then I was like so shooken up because I was like, these sharks are going to eat me. I'm such a little fish. So it was it was really crazy. I was really nervous. But but it's but it's OK. Right. Like so kids starting their business. You no, know, they're going to be nervous, too. But it, the point is, you got to push through it. And and, right. you and it worked out and all yeah. of the hard work and dedication, all yeah. the hard work and dedication that I put to you know, creating my company and uh, mm -hmm. figuring out the branding and marketing, it really paid, paid forward. Yeah. So so from that, you got the attention of Damon John and um, he ended up being your mentor and helping uh, to grow the business to the next level. Because at that point, you guys were all really, really successful. But he, uh, exactly. he helped you take it to the next level. Which, exactly. Which is what a lot of people don't know. We actually didn't even receive a deal from Shark Tank. Uh, what I feel like I left with something even more valuable, which was a mentorship from Damon John. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, offered a deal, but I didn't take it because it just didn't really make sense to, you okay. know, give someone three dollars a tie for the life of my company. Right. So I decided to uh, go with Damon John. He gave me lots of resources that I would still have if I actually had a deal. So. It was Smart. pretty great. I got to be at Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale, Cohan. Um, it's been a very uh, lucrative partnership with Shark Tank and Damage John, actually. Yeah, and there's another partnership that you were able to to, to acquire, and that is creating yeah. a lot of bow ties the for the NBA. Association, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, and that was cool too because it it proved that I don't have to you know play basketball to actually have a contract <laughs> with the NBA. So it's it's pretty cool. You know, you don't always have to settle for the things that you would normally think of, like a yeah. like basketball player, singer. You know, it's yeah. important to create other options, like being an entrepreneur and creating your own company. Yeah, and you've been really successful, and we were talking about press, and you've been a ton of press. You know, I was looking for pictures to include in this presentation, and my gosh, I had so many options because I could see how much how much press coverage you'd had. And, of course, you've been on BizKids TV yeah. series, and your story, by the way, is one of my top five favorites on BizKids. <laughs> Thank you. The first cut of Thank your, you. your story came in, and you did like that sideways dab and kind of ran out camera left I, I yeah I stop laughing it was so hilarious anyway there's a link in the for kids to watch on biz kids your your profile so um that's kind of an overview of your business um i did want to ask you a couple other questions though before we get to the q a from from the kids um mm -hmm. that session you know we talked about uh just take that first step um do you think that well, why don't you tell what tell us what do you think your big first step was? Like, was it making the bow tie with your with your granny or was it was it something else? What was the first? I step? feel like my big first step. Well, personally, for me, it wasn't even cre about creating a business. I just got that out of my mind. I didn't I didn't even have that in my mind at first. It was solely right? based on me having a problem and fixing that problem. And that problem was, you know, not being able to wear what I want to wear, you know, when I want to wear it. So I'm going to make it myself and do it myself. And from there, uh, I began to get a demand, I guess you would say. So I would go out um, to school or play with my friends around the corner and they'll be like, hey, where did you get that tie? That fresh, cool tie that, you know, I haven't seen before. And I would say, you know, I made it. Do you want me to make you one? And at first, it kind of started off as a thing where, I'm not going to lie, I did accept Hot Cheetos as payment <laughs> at first. Hot Cheetos. I did. I did. But I had to, you know, raise the price, raise the cost. Right. Um, More than a bag of chips. Uh, right. and, start char and start charging for bow ties, of course. Yeah. And so what... What was it that made your, your product unique from the very beginning? I feel like the thing that made my product unique was the one that I had lots of different fabrics that weren't already out. Because I had a grandmother that was sewing for over 50 years, she had accumulated lots of fabric from, you know, over the years in the 50s and 60s and it was just, you know, a lot of vintage fabrics that I got to, you know, right. capitalize off of saying that, you know, these are vintage antique uh, fabrics that I'm turning mm -hmm. something new to into, you know, creating something new out of, basically. So right. that so was one point. And also the fact that I was a kid creating a company, right. lots of people were like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. It was a, it was just such a wild, big wow factor. Yeah. Yeah, so the vintage fabric combined with a really young entrepreneur um, kind of really caught people's attention. And, and I bet your ties were high yeah. quality, too, especially if they you, were. Mm -hmm. you had to sew and she was ex expert seamstress. So um, mm -hmm. tell, tell the kids listening, how did you handle no? Like, because there's, I think, a lot of fear wrapped up in hearing no. And I'm sure at the beginning, maybe you heard no a lot. Like, how, how did you... Yeah. Of how you there is a lot of there is a lot of rejection when creating a company. Uh, I remember one time uh, a lady was trying to get a bow tie and she was like, you know, I, I want this bow tie. And she asked for the price and I told her the price and then she threw it back on the table and was like, you know, I could get that at Walmart. And so <laughs> that pretty much it really it pretty much like took me back. I was like, well. I went to my mom, I was like, well, mom, she said she could get it at Walmart. Like, what did I do wrong? But it really showed me that it's not me. You know, you have to really think about that you can't provide to everyone. You can't cater to everyone. But now that I've, you know, I've sat through this whole 
uh, Q and A, and I've listened to you talk. I feel like you know asking. I should have went back and asked you know why, so I could you know maybe cater to her more or figure out another problem that I wasn't you know right fixing. Or maybe she just wasn't your target customer. Like maybe your target exactly. customers, people that really appreciate handmade, high quality item that you can't get at Walmart, right? That's a little bit more unique. So exactly. Um, yeah, o overcoming that fear of no is is actually a great thing for young entrepreneurs to do. Um, tell us something kind of. Um, Tell us a little uh, secret about being on Shark Tank. Like, what was it like? Some kind of behind the scenes working. Like, what what was like a, an aha moment or something that maybe the kids don't know about? Well, something that the kids probably don't know. Well, I did cry after the show. Well, I told y'all that I I didn't get the deal. I first I didn't get the deal, and so in my head I was thinking, you know, I already messed up, and I didn't get the deal because I was so young at the time. I was like you know, oh my gosh, what is really happening? I'm just so hyped up of Rice Krispie Treats. I don't know what to do. Yeah. But uh, I started crying and it was just, you know, really sad at the end. But then when I got back home and I started to grow up and really live through the company, it all, you know, really made sense. And mm. it was all meant to happen. Yeah. Oh, the that's cute. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, hey, Mo, we've got um, uh, a ton of questions on the chat, but I think we only have time for one. Uh, and let's let's generalize these questions yeah. to. So right now, people are stuck at home. What? Let's assume you were starting your bow tie business today. How would you do it if you were stuck at home, as we all are today? Great question. Well, if I was stuck at home and I wanted to start a bow tie business, I would. Personally, if I had, you know, a grandfather or a dad that had some old ties that they had, there's a way that you could reconstruct a necktie and turn it into a bow tie that you could not only, you know, resell, but wear for yourself. Great. Great. Well, I think that do about does it in terms of the time that we have today. But um, uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. This was a fantastic chat. Uh, as I said, you are going to get an email this afternoon with uh, a link to watch, rewatch the webinar in case you want to share it with anyone or you missed anything. And uh, we've got all of our contact information on our websites to learn more about our products and our books out there listed. Thank you, Mo, for joining us. Can Mo talk about his book Thank too? Thank you, guys. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Yes, I didn't oh, have go my ahead. Book. didn't get a chance to talk about his book this too. This yeah. is A Young Person's Guide to a Startup Success. It's a really good book to anyone, not only young people, to anyone who have um, a dream that they want to pursue, um, who really just want to go for it. And I want to share it with you guys my four points my four main points in the book, and they are be to believe in yourself, mm -hmm. take the opportunity to give back, to work hard and study hard, and not only that, but to seek support from your friends and family. And with those four points, you could tackle and dive through anything. That's great advice. That's that's really good advice. And we, we've had, there's a lot of questions that have come in too on the Q&A, we just haven't had a chance to get to, but we could probably message people privately um yes. thank you so much mo thank you janine and sean thank, thank you, you all guys for please mo. everyone stay safe stay healthy and we hope we inspired you to create your own stuck at home startup today thank you thanks guys